Hi, today's video is going to be on L-theanine, the co-component alongside caffeine in green tea. Every day this past week, I've taken one capsule of the Zoo formula, which is 100 milligrams of caffeine anhydrous and 200 milligrams of L-theanine, which is a common ratio that I've seen in a few other supplements. I just settled on this one because it was one of the uh, more highly rated products that I saw. I would say that I definitely do notice a difference between taking one of these and taking uh, 100 milligrams of caffeine anhydrous by itself. This I have taken for a long time. In the, re in the recent weeks, I've stopped using it in favor of other products, but this is just normal caffeine anhydrous. Um, when I take this, especially on an empty stomach, I occasionally get what I call the flutters, which I would just describe as the kick in of caffeine that's sudden and kind of raises your heart rate to an uncomfortable level sometimes. So when I take it, it's like, oh my, like, wow, <laughs> heart rate's going there a little bit, <laughs> you know, which is different from anxiety. The, the flutters is just like a very, it's just an uncomfortably like fast heart rate kind of, and a, like, cause, it, cause caffeine can kick in kind of fast when you take it on an empty stomach. Well, when combined with L-theanine, if this product does contain the proportions that its label uh, says it does, I, I would say that 100 milligrams of caffeine just goes into your bloodstream easier, a little a little calmer than uh, than caffeine does, or rather the effects of it are, are, are calmer, even though it's just the same amount of caffeine. Because um, I've taken this on an empty stomach as well, and it just doesn't hit me as hard. I still get energy, I still get the effect that I desire, but there's, there's no flutters. I would like to know if L-theanine by itself has these same calming effects. So I'm going to pick up some of sun theanine, which is supposed to be pure L-theanine. And I'm going to test that out in a, a couple different dosages and see how that goes for me. But some several of the studies that I've come across on L-theanine suggest that it is most effective and has the most noticeable effects when taken during situations of elevated stress or abnormally induced stress. There were three different studies that I found. One conducted in 2003, one in 2006, and one in 2011 that all suggest L-theanine is most effective in instances where stress is abnormally elevated. For example, one of those studies artificially induced a state of elevated stress in subjects by having them complete an arithmetic problem. Another study just started off with individuals who self-reported having high levels of anxiety and compared those to a group that took L-theanine who had low levels of anxiety. The results of these studies showed that L-theanine did assist in reducing stress in the subjects who had elevated levels of stress. However, for those who had low level, low baseline levels of stress, the L-theanine was not noticeably effective. I would also like to note here that all of these studies used dosages of L-theanine ranging from 200 milligrams to 400 milligrams. I only found one study that contradicted the findings of though these other three, the 2003, the 2006, and 2011 study. There was one study in 2004 by the University of Queensland that actually says the opposite. It says that it was able to lower stress levels in people with low baseline levels of stress or anxiety, but not in people with elevated levels of stress or anxiety. Hmm. My personal experience with the elk, theanine, and caffeine combination supports the findings of the three studies that suggest it is helpful in situations of elevated stress. Because as I reported before, with L-theanine and caffeine, I don't get the flutters. My heart rate does not elevate to an uncomfortable level or affect my breathing to a point that is 
uh, uncomfortable, whereas caffeine by itself sometimes does. So it's fair to say that caf taking caffeine for me on an empty stomach can induce a state of elevated stress, but I don't get that with the L-theanine. So my personal experience concurs with the results of, the, of most of the studies that I have seen with one contradiction from that University of Queensland study. If I had a choice between caffeine alone and caffeine with L-theanine, I'd pick it with L-theanine. And because I have substantial experience taking 100 milligrams of a caffeine anhydrous alone, I would say with confidence, at least to myself or my clone, that this is not a placebo effect. Of course, I would encourage you to go out and try this combination yourself. I would say get at least 200 milligrams of L-theanine because that is the smallest dosage I've seen used in studies that had significant results in producing calmness. And let me know what your guys' experience with L-theanine is. I, I occasionally read through forums on Reddit to get people's opinions on a substance. There's on, on nootropics, because that's really all I take is, is natural extracts. And there always seems to be a variety of opinions. There's always somebody who says, this just flat out doesn't work for me. And then there's people who say, wow, this is the best thing ever. And then there, the, there are those people who note the subtleties. And those are the comments I, I listen to. Like a lot of people said that L, they, they think L-theanine really shines through when paired with a stimulant such as caffeine. And I'd have to agree with that. The studies that I've shared with you today suggest that L-theanine by itself will work so long as the subject taking it is experiencing an abnormally high level of stress. Normally, I'm a pretty calm guy, so I'll have to wait until some stressful event occurs in my life, and then I'm going to try taking the sun theanine in dosages of 200 milligrams or 400 milligrams. I'll let you guys know how that goes.